We're gonna forget that happened. All right, what we have here is the points on the motor and the cradle that we've removed from the car. These are the points I'm gonna have to put onto the vehicle and I'm gonna put this in. The one that's gonna be the most difficult is this one right here. It moves all over in four dimensional space. All right, now that we've got the engine and the cradle out, we're gonna to need to mount the cradle into another vehicle so that we've got some solid points for the engine to hang on. But we've got to get these two points, and these two points back here, and these two strut towers to line up perfectly. And the way to do that is with a tape measure. Well, that'll work. A few measurements, a lot of different angles. That's the way I would have done it in the past, but I've watched a couple of guys that are building a Mini over in England. I don't know if you've ever seen Project Banky. If you haven't, go watch them. They do some real good work. But I'm going to use their idea and make a negative jig thingy to get all my mounting points in three-dimensional space and put it into another vehicle. Step one, buy six bolts. Step two, Put six bolts, three on each side like that. Measure between those three bolts. Mark out a piece of metal at those dimensions. Make a couple quick bends in it. Slap it up into place with a couple of magnets. I have to pick up the four points on the bottom for the engine cradle. And to do that, I've just cut a piece of half inch tubing. Same thickness as the engine cradle. That will fit up into the hole in the chassis. And run the bolt up through and tighten it. And then it'll be locked up against the nut. I'll weld the cross brace between this point and this point. Same on the other side. And then I'm gonna come across with something that kind of X's it so that it won't twist. And then I have to come up to the strut tower. And that'll give me all my points that I need to put it into the other car. Now that I've got these welded, I can remove them. You notice that the edge of these bolts here, and you can't see the back side of this one, but they're ground because the top of this is curved. That makes the bolts lay out that way. I'm not sure if I've ground these enough, but it should drop right out, and it did. And there I have the top plate that'll hold my strut plate in place once I build the jig. Truth of the matter is, I'm spoiled. Had to keep the doors open today. Been doing a little plasma hacking. And if you don't keep the doors open, the place fills up with smoke. But that thing right up there has spoiled me. It's only like 90 degrees out here. I'm dying. All right. Well, I have the negative jig thingy complete. Adding this bar to the top may have been a little bit of overkill. Towers have already been cut loose. Let's take a little look at it. Oh, beautiful. I close the door so you can see something. All right, that's better. So there it is. I have to take the uh, I don't know what you'd call them, the top out of the strut tower, and then the whole thing will drop out. All right, let's see if these strut tower 
strut tower top, strut tower cap, strut tower, whatever you want to call them, will come out of here. Adding this may have been a bit of overkill, like I said before, but I think it'll help. Make sure everything's lined up. I may have to take the jig out before I can get these out because these might foul on stuff and not want to move around as they try to clear these bolts. But we'll see if I hacked enough out with the plasma cutter. All right, so I'm going to do a lot more work to these just to get the plate that I need out of here. But it was just a lot easier to cut this frame rail from the outside than it was to get up underneath here and try to cut like this and have everything falling down on me. The reason I'm keeping these and not making new ones is they're curved. And I did not want the uh, problems of trying to build a curved piece of steel like that. And it turns out that doing that was the right thing to do because without this bar across here, they don't have hardly any flex front to back. But in and out, they'll move. So that will definitely help keep them parallel to each other or perpendicular to each other, perpendicular in the parallel, parallel in the perpendicular, there you go. All right, there it is. Doesn't that look exactly like that? Well, I mean, it has that point and that point right there and there, and it has a strut tower and a strut tower and a strut tower and a strut tower. I think that's gonna save me a lot of measuring and angle finding and all kinds of stuff. Now just find some place to store it until I need it, which won't be long, I hope, and get these cleaned up and ready to use. And thanks for watching. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. This is gonna be a fun project. Take like 904. I'm going to get this right this time.